Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another segment of Hanging Out for a Living. Today, I have the immense pleasure of hosting someone who's not only an inspiration to many, but has also charted a transformative journey from the depths of despair to a life filled with purpose. He's a best-selling author, an engaging speaker, and a dedicated recovery pastor. Friends, I'm talking about Craig Brown, the man behind the impactful book, Stop Hiding, Start Healing. Craig, it's an honor to have you with us today. Thank you so, so much. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So let's dive into um, our questions and um, yeah. we'll we'll carry on here. So Craig, your journey from pain and destruction to freedom and purpose is really nothing short of inspirational. Can you tell us about a pivotal moment in your life that um, really acted as a catalyst for your transformation? Sure. Um, pivotal moment. Um the, the major one, oh, I had two, actually. Okay. The first one was um, after having been in the depths and the pit of the dark drug world of which I was sucked up into by my own doing, my own decision making. Um, after a number of years, pain, emptiness, suffering, depression, darkness, you name it, uh, you know, struggling emotionally, mentally, physically, zero spiritually. Um, it was 1985, uh, after years of being in this um, uh, darkness and destruction, I had this epiphany, um, night, summer of 1985. And I, and I was, um, it, was, it was a weekend where I was at uh, the local beach on the East Coast, and I was coming back from that. And uh, I was a mess. And I had this revelation uh, that if I didn't if I didn't change, and if I didn't um, stop going down this uh, path of destruction, I was going to end up dead. It was one of those, you know, you know, th this is not working. I know uh, I've got to do something because the alternative was bleak. I was living hour by hour, day by day, and it was bleak. And I had this, it was a it was a major epiphany. And I know it was from God. I didn't realize it at the time then, but I, I know and, and what we all don't realize uh through all of our lives is that is that his hand is always on us. Always. And it's up to us to open that door to let him in. So his hand was always there and he protected me through amazing situations but it was on that on that day on that ride home where i realized i've got to make some changes i have to do this and consequently i did uh weeks and months after that i extricated myself from uh that drug world and from using drugs and from alcohol and all the other you know horrible things that go with it and over the next uh months uh, and certainly years, I, I uh, was set free, um, to a degree. Uh, uh, there, <laughs> yeah. then, then there was part two that happened seven years later, Ooh. where, uh, and as I explained in my book, when the pain is greater than your fear, you are ready to make changes in your life and heal and be set free. So the second one, and I'll make it quick, the second one, after being clean and, and out of this for six or seven years, I was still miserable, miserable. And there was a gaping void in my heart and in my life and in direction and mission and purpose in my life still. And, um, and God had a real sense of humor because what he did was he brought me to the bedside of my dad who was dying in the intensive care unit. So I, I was free of alcohol and drugs, but the pain, the guilt, the shame, uh, the hurt, the trauma that I had carried all those years, I'd never dealt with it. I hid from it because I was too afraid to deal with it until that day. And I stood there and the pain was excruciating. I was watching this, my dad, who I wasn't really close with, but my dad was going to, doctor said it could be a matter of hours. 
whether he lives or dies. Well, the next day, I I cried out to God, and I cried out like I'd never done before, and I'd had it. And I said, I, I can't do this anymore the way I'm going down this path. I can't do it anymore, God. And I need you to come into my life and take over, heal me, take away this pain, take away the hurt, the shame, everything I am feeling. And I cried, literally cried for about over an hour, and my life changed miraculously. It was absolutely miraculous. That was the first day of my starting my recovery. And that was the first day of my complete life change where God took over my life. That Those are two pivotal moments. And my life's never been the same since. Thank you for sharing those. I hope um, that our viewers are taking some notes here. One of the things that really struck me was when the pain is greater than the fear. Right. And that is huge. That is huge. So thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Um, so uh, in Stop Hiding, Start Healing, you've shared over two decades of your experience in Christ-centered recovery. What's the core yeah. message you hope um, our your readers will take away from your book? Uh, there's a big difference between secular recovery and Christ-centered recovery. There is only one who can fix, change, heal, and restore us. There's only one, and that is Jesus and a relationship with God. When Now, does God work in secular recovery? Absolutely. Has worked through AA, NA. He works through everything. But where, that, where it falls short is... And the difference between secular recovery and Christ-centered recovery, secular recovery is all so myopic on getting sober and clean, all right? right. Uh, and the resources available to be able to do that, but they fall short. because. And in Christ-centered recovery, uh, and you're forced to have, say, your identity is an addict or an alcoholic. In over 26 years of being of serving in ministry, Christ Center Recovery Ministry, I've never once referred to anybody as an alcoholic or an addict. That is not your identity, right? And but you have to take on the identity of of something that you're trying to be set free from, and something that brings so much shame. So the message I want people to take away is: uh, yes, you can get clean and sober, but don't overlook the damage that you've done to your soul. And there's only one that can repair that and strip away and crush the shame, the guilt, the pain, the hurt that you have been through. Whether it's addiction, life struggle, abortion, divorce, there's only one that can do that. And that's where Christ Center Recovery is so key because it is bringing the healer in to set you completely free. Now, as I mentioned, I was clean for six, seven years. But I was still miserable because I had so much hurt, pain, shame, and guilt that I was still carrying. Well, there's one that can set that free. And through Christ and recovery, right, you can find that. And that's my encouragement to anybody. Get involved with Christ-centered recovery. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally believe that. And um, in your role as a recovery pastor, it sounds really intriguing how do you merge your pastoral duties with the principles of recovery? And what has been the most rewarding aspect of that journey? I know you touched on that a little bit, but. Um, well, uh, the, well, the, first of all, all the principles come straight from the Bible. Okay. They're all biblical principles. And they're, I mean, the Bible is our recovery manual. When you read back over all the stories, OK. A majority of them are uh, the Lord reaching people who were blind, who were lame, who were hemorrhaging, who were in adultery, who were okay, filled, filled with recovery stories. So first and foremost, my role is to help people. And I'm not a believe me, I am not a theologian. Uh, I am strictly I flow in the recovery stream. So the bulk of my knowledge and my own personal experience is taking God's word when it comes to healing, restoration, freedom, uh, redemption, you name it, and it's healing, 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 healing. So 
my so the principles I embraced early when I in my own personal experience and the growth that I went through, I just that was totally equally yoked with everything I've done in my role in helping thousands of people over two decades. So I help guide them uh, and simply, uh, that's not a bad word, simplify or uh, uh, direct God's and help them understand God's word when it comes to their own personal situation. And all the common denominator for all of us, and two out of three people came to our ministry because of pain, not because of addiction, pain. And we tend, when pain presents itself, to run from it and hide from it. That, that, was, that's, that started in Genesis chapter 3. When Adam and Eve blew it, the first thing they experienced was pain, shame, guilt. And what do they do? They hid. Yeah. And they were separated from God. And that's been going on forever. So people should be surprised that it still happens. Yeah. And in our own you know, lives, there's a portion of that that we have to have set free and break cycles so you know the principles are there i'm totally equally yoked with all the recovery principles in the bible and my mission and purpose is to help people understand that you have to stop hiding from it and start healing everything whatever you're going through by applying those principles biblical principles we find in the bible Absolutely. And um, I love how you how you phrased that and illustrated that in such a profound way. I hear people saying all the time, life does not come with an owner's manual. And I'm like, well, yeah, it does. It's called the Bible. It is. Yeah. But it's, it's intimidating. I, I, it is intimidating. Yeah. Um, it can be it intimidating. And, and because of the shame, and this is why people hide. The number one reason people hide is shame right good people that's why i titled the book or the lord inspired me to title the book stop hiding start healing because i witnessed and observed so many people continue to come to church and hide yeah it's a great place to hide it is oh yeah. make it look yeah. good hey everything's great how are you doing worship take notes serve do it but deep inside we still carry this shame and you know the lord's the only one that can shatter that can shatter that but you have to come out of hiding to allow them to do that you know exactly exactly so true and um so with your wide ranging experience in speaking at corporate events uh seminars and churches what's the one piece of advice or insight you'd like to share with someone who's currently battling with their past and trying to find their path forward um i know you know coming forward and stepping into not being afraid you would talked about that um, yeah. and not running away but if there's anything else you'd like to add to that yeah uh, embrace your pain you see uh uh oh. in the, the bible it, it i wish i could quote the verse and i'm sure i i uh, have it um and it, and it says why are you so surprised at the painful situations that you are going through why are you so surprised at the sufferings that you're going through Number one, we all go through. You're not the only one out there. And I know people, I felt this, and I know others feel this. I'm the only one that is suffering in this way. And the good news is, if you want to call it good news or the reassuring news, is that you're not alone. But you isolate yourself. And we tend to do that. We isolate ourselves because we are afraid, number one, afraid to share with other people. Maybe you don't have people in your life that you trust or who are safe. You have to find people that are trusting and people who are safe in order for you to come out of hiding to be able to share these things. So number one, embrace the pain. Stop running from it. Stop running from it. Don't be surprised it's there. Stop running from it. And you will be at a place, and this is the, and I've we've already touched on this, when, you're, when your pain is greater than your fear, you will reach a place that you'll do whatever it takes. You'll do whatever it takes to get well. You will. But And we hide, as I mentioned, because of the shame. And so when people are aware of that, and, and, you t and uh, again, over two decades, when 
when we talk about these things, it's like a the light bulb goes on. It's like, yeah, you're right. I've run from pain all my life. And we learned as kids, we learned it how to how to cope. And these coping mechanisms worked for a number of years, but then they became unhealthy. And sure. so we've learned to run from pain all of our life. It's not natural for us to go, oh, good, a painful situation. I'm going to walk right through this and allow the Lord to build me, change me, heal me, strengthen me. Yeah. That's, that is the attitude we need to have. Right. So the message being, don't hide from it any longer. Step out. I can help you um, if you reach out. I can help you understand that even even better. But also there are resources near you, around others that I could point you to. Absolutely. Well, all I can say, Craig, is wow. Your insights and experiences are truly invaluable. And I'm sure many of our viewers today are moved by your journey and the lessons you've shared here with us. For those who'd like to delve deeper and to continue the conversation or even just connect with Craig personally, I highly recommend it. All of Craig's contact details are in the description below. And so don't miss the chance to learn from someone who has walked the path and emerged with the message of hope and healing. Craig, thank you once again for joining us. And um, to our audience, remember, stay inspired and keep seeking your purpose. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.